tuning in by cable or by internet. Um, so in our sanctuary, we've made some changes. We have lifted the seating restrictions on this half of the sanctuary. We've kept them on this half. You sit where you're comfortable. You are welcome to wear masks if you have not been vaccinated or if you would feel more comfortable doing that, feel free. And um, our goal today is to spend time in worship, not to decide, gee, I wonder why they're wearing a mask. Gee, I wonder why they're not. Not important. Not important. We want to take some time and we want to um, open our service in, in prayer and then we, uh, we want to get into some singing, get into some time of worship. Let's pray. Father, this is a beautiful day, a day that we get to come into your presence with song, with thanksgiving, with praise for you alone are God. This has been the case every day of our life. But today, somehow, Father, we feel a little more free. So hopefully that's making us a little more grateful. Lord, move among us, inspire us, but most importantly, Father, connect with us that we may see your face, hear your voice, know your touch this morning, and that that may transform us into being more Christ-like. We ask all this, Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Welcome. David said in uh, Psalm 145, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. We are here to worship God made us for worship. Let us stand and exalt the name of the Lord. He is our King. Together now. He is exalted. The King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever. Exalted
There are children who would like to come up front for the children's sermon. Oh, I thought there were some more out there someplace. Hi, guys, girls, how are you doing? Okay, all right, I got a tough question for you. Oh, come on, Carson, we'll wait a minute for you. Oh, you can even bring wit with you, huh? Do you guys have any idea how many bones you have in your body? You do know you have bones, right? Because if you fall, it hurts, right? And, and you have bones that make you stand up. Do you know you have over 200 bones in your body? In fact, when you're little, you have more. That's weird, isn't it? True story, adults. Children are born with 300 separate bones, roughly, in their body. Adults have 206. 94 of them fuse. And you wind up with 206 bones in your body. Do you know God knows every one of them? You know what else God knows? He knows how many hair are on your head. He knows how many breaths you took last night while you slept. Now, I'm guessing your moms and dads think you guys are pretty special, don't they? Yeah, I thought so, Carson. Moms and dads love us a lot, right? Do you think your mom or dad know how many hair there are in your head? They don't. Trust me, they've never counted them. But God knows. God loves you so much, he keeps track of your hair. And a guy like me, that means he's doing a lot of subtraction, okay? Because I started out with a lot, and every day he has to subtract a few because they, they, they keep leaving me. I must be a bad host, I don't know. But anyway, God knows exactly how many hair there are in your head. That's how much he loves you. He thinks you're so special, you're worth keeping track of your hair. I mean, my mom and dad loved me, but they had no idea how many hair I had. I don't even think they knew how many bones I had in my body. But God knows that stuff about you. He thinks you're that special. He knows that one of you may have more hair than another. He knows that somebody's got longer hair than somebody else, huh? He knows how long it is. Gosh, that's, that's a God that loves you. So w- when you go to Sunday school today, try to remember, he loves me more than my parents. God loves me more than my grandma and grandpa. Holy cow, that's a lot of love. He can't wait to keep getting to know you better every day. 
So we'll keep talking to him through prayer and, and keep reading the Bible and we'll get to know him even better. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you know us and that you know how many bones we have in our body. You know how many breaths we took last night while we slept and you keep track of our hair. Thank you, Father, that we are so special to you that you know things like that about us. Help us to never forget how much you love us, no matter what anybody says to us. In Jesus' name, amen. <gasps> Lollipop time. There you go. It's always a, a pleasure when I get a text from Beth Full and she tells me she's going to be home for the weekend and, uh, and uh, available to sing for us. Uh, it's always a joy to have her with us. And um, Beth, uh, the daughter of uh, Chip and Janine Fole, you got some other family members with you today and a friend of yours. Um, Beth, part of this church for years, uh, it's a young girl, and tell us what you're doing now, would you, Beth, just briefly? Yeah, I'm, I'm, so I'm living up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston, and I've been there for a little over a year now, and working for an educational travel company. Not the best job to have currently, but it's going well, and we'll get back to travel eventually, so. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, well, good. It's, it's always so nice of you to be here, and you have a little special, um, um, event taking place in this visit home, right? Yes. What yeah, might that it was, be? we surprised uh, mom for her birthday this hey. year. Hey. So we had it all planned out. She had no idea we were coming and we surprised her on Thursday for her birthday. Okay, yeah. well, so I'm glad that it all worked out and the timing <laughs> was, was just right. Sing for us an arrangement of a song I've heard for years, but I've never heard this arrangement. You are my all in all. Jesus, 
Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. And thank you, Kim. Let me share with you a few prayer concerns um, before we spend some time in prayer. Beth, I still remember I wasn't even, I don't even think I had preached the first time here at Christ Church when um, Sam was, was made an Eagle Scout and um, you were bebopping around to church taking pictures. And as a former photographer, I was um, like, ooh, somebody that knows cameras, fun. It's been like three years already, holy cow. Okay, some folks we need to be praying for. Jill Calderon's mother, Nancy, passed away this week. So um, be praying for the Calderon family and for Jill's extended, or, yeah, Jill's extended family. Vicki Engels is headed to the hospital tomorrow to have back surgery. So he'll be holding Vicki up in prayer. And Marcy Ziegler's dad, Chuck Harbison, many of you know Chuck. Chuck's been pretty sick. He was airlifted to Hammett this week. Um, he seems to be improving a little over the weekend, but um, continue to hold Chuck and his wife up in prayer, um, and, and their whole family is a surround Chuck with care. A couple of folks that we know are hospitalized with COVID right now, Dave Scanlon, as well as Pastor Steve Henry. Uh, pastor Steve is a pastor at the Victory Heights UB Church. Um, he is in Butler Hospital on a ventilator. Um, There's some improvement in his oxygenation, so um, they're talking about transporting him to AGH this week, uh, but keep Steve in prayer. Uh, The family of Bill Moffat, Bill passed away on Monday. His wife, Marilyn, is connected with our congregation through Bob DeWoody. Bob DeWoody's sister is Marilyn Moffat, so she lost her husband this week. And I was made aware um, in between services that Big John Smith, as opposed to smaller John Smith, your son, the bigger John Smith fell this week and has hurt his arm and his knee, and we don't know the extent of those injuries yet, Um, possibly a broken knee, I hope not, Um, but be praying for John Smith, all right? Before we spend some time in prayer, I want to share with you um, some faces. We have four faces. Um... There are many, many more connected with the congregation, but these are four we have of some service people who are active duty military. Yesterday was, um, was Armed Forces Day, and so we want to recognize these four. Drew uh, Fredenberg, he's with the Navy. Becky Kozad, who's with the Army, little side note, Becky's due to be induced June 1st with another child. Riley Bacher, who's with the Air Force, and Ian Black, who serves with the Army. We want to hold up these four in prayer, and then we will pray for the rest of our needs. Let's pray. Father, it is so amazing to live in a country where we experience such freedoms. Many of those freedoms we have, Father, are thanks to the men and women who stand guard to our active military. Father, as they serve this day, some in harm's way every day, we pray your blessing upon them. We pray, Father, that they would know your love and your grace that they would lean hard into you. Father, walk with, guide, protect these men and women. Surround their families who support them and love them and care for them, Father. Surround them with grace as they often have a difficult task of waiting until loved ones return. Father, we recognize these four, but we know that even within those, within the sound of my voice, there are so many, many more active military represented. So here are the names that come to our mind and to our hearts in this moment. Thank you, Father. Thank you for their service. Thank you for their dedication. Thank you for their sacrifice on our behalf. 
And now, Father, we also lift up to you those who are struggling that we know this day. Some who have lost loved ones. Some, Father, who are facing surgery. Some who have battled, been battling illness and recovery has been slow. Some, Father, who are still fighting COVID and need your grace. Father, we just pray wholeness and healing and peace into these lives. And again, Father, within the sound of my voice, Lord, there are so many, many, many more needs. Needs that you are so well aware of. Places, Father, that I know you're present, but Father, I pray that you would reveal yourself. That individuals may see your face and know your touch. Experience your hope and your grace. We ask all this, Father. In the awesome name of Jesus the Christ, and we pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Through the eyes of man it seems there's so much we have lost. And one by one the enemy has whispered lies that led them off as slaves. But we know that you are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we step into the valley unafraid, unafraid. We have to drive home, come alive, come alive. We go out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Come out of the ashes, let us
We go out to dry bones. Come alive. Thank you, team. Good morning again, church. If you have your Bibles with you or your electronic devices with your Bible on it, turn to the book of Ezekiel. It's in the Old Testament, chapter 37. We're going to read the first 10 verses. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 10. Here's what God's Word says. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Here ends the reading of God's word. So let me set this text in its context. The prophet Ezekiel has been writing for 36 years. Chapters in, the, in this moment in history, the nation of Israel is divided between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. They have two separate capitals, two separate kings. They are not doing what God has called them to do. They have been worshiping false gods, Baal, Asherah, Moloch. They've been sacrificing their kids to these gods. They've not been doing anything they were told. So God removes his hand of protection from the northern kingdom and the Babylonians come in and they capture the northern kingdoms. Now, if you'd have asked an Israelite prior to that moment in history, would God ever let his chosen people be captured? They'd have said, absolutely not. No way. It will never happen. It wasn't even on their radar. It was unthinkable. The only thing more unthinkable than them being taken into captivity was that if they were taken, they would ever come back. It had never happened in history that a people taken into captivity ever came back. None of this was on their radar. But here they were, taken by the Babylonians, taken off in captivity. The first 30-some ver- um, chapters of the book of Ezekiel, God is making his case and making it clear that he is allowing this to happen so that they will come back to God. And he says again and again and again, and then they will know that I am the Lord. I am Yahweh. I am their God. And he says several times, listen, I take no pleasure in punishing the wicked. I would much rather they repent. He says it again and again and again. But they don't hear that. He prophesies against the enemies of Israel and says to them, you're also going to be punished for what you do. But he allows his captivity to take place. And then in the 37th verse, or 37th chapter, he gives them an image to hold on to. 
This is apocalyptic literature. It is not real common in scripture, but it is a genre that has become common when you look at Daniel, Ezekiel, Revelation. It's a very particular style of writing. It's something we don't encounter much, so we don't often appreciate. But here is an image where God is showing the prophet through this vision what he's about to do symbolically. He starts by taking the prophet back and forth through the valley, the Hebrew says, not a valley, probably the valley that Ezekiel saw his first vision from God in. And this valley is littered with bones. They're everywhere. These are not soldiers who have recently died. These are bones that are dry. There is no flesh on them. And they are scattered throughout. They are not whole skeletons. There's just bones. And then God asks the prophet a question. Can these bones live? Well, no matter how you slice it in English, what the prophet basically says is, God, you alone know. If you're asking me, can I do anything? No. No, they can't. God, they're dead. They're scattered. There's no life in any of this. But the prophet's smart enough to know that God will do what God wants to do. So his response is, only you know, God. Only you know. So God gives the prophet a command and tells him to prophesy to these bones. Now, a prophet's job is to prophesy to the people of Israel, to give them the message from God. Sometimes it's future telling. Sometimes it's simply proclaiming God's dismay, blessing, whatever it is. Prophesy to dead, dry bones does not sound like something interesting. But when God says speak, it is best to speak. So Ezekiel goes through the valley and he begins to prophesy to these bones. Listen, dry bones, God's going to bring life back to you. And here's how it's going to happen. He's going to put tendons and flesh, muscle, and skin on you. And he's going to put breath in you. So Elijah begins to prophesy to these bones, and pretty soon he hears this crazy rattling noise, and bones start coming together, bone on bone. And pretty soon tendons form, and muscle structures form, and skin forms. And now he's going back and forth in a valley of bodies, not skeletons. But there's no breath in them. Remember back in Genesis 2 when God creates the first human out of the dust of the ground? And there is no life in that human until the rucha is the Hebrew word, the breath, the wind, the spirit of God, where God goes, and Adam comes to life. The same thing happens here. All of the sudden, The prophet prophesies to the wind and the breath of God comes and reanimates these bodies and a vast army is standing in the valley. And then God interprets it and tells the prophet what this is all about. You see, here's the meaning of these dry bones. One, Israel is dead spiritually. They are not doing what they've been called by God to do. God brought them out of Egypt. God brought them through the desert. God brought them into the promised land. And they walked away from them. They're busy serving other gods. They're dead spiritually. They are dry bones spiritually. They've just been taken off in captivity. They no longer have any hope. Being a nation is gone. To make it worse, they're separated. Half the kingdom is the southern kingdom. They're not taken into captivity. These guys have been taken off by themselves. 
They don't have anything to hope for. And yet God says, as dry as this looks, as hopeless as this looks, as ridiculous as this looks, I'm going to restore you. And when I restore you, then you'll know who I am. I'm God. Does anybody know when this prophecy is fulfilled? Ezekiel's writing about 600 B.C., or as scholars say, B.C.E., before Common Era or Christian Era, 600 years before Jesus. That's when he's writing. This prophecy is fulfilled in 1948. 1948. 2,600 years after it's proclaimed by Ezekiel. How, how long have you been waiting? Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. So what are we to take away from this? Well, first of all, God alone is the one who restores us spiritually. People look for restoration, spiritual restoration in a lot of places, and I've heard some pretty crazy things people have tried to find spiritual restoration. But the reality is there's only one true God. And it's in him alone that we find what our heart longs for. That connection with our creator, that sense of purpose in life, that sense of peace that we so desperately want comes from one place and one place only. Israel forgot that. They were looking for it under every rock and around every tree. God says, it happens only with me. Maybe you've been looking other places. Maybe you've been looking through um, mystic religions, or maybe you've been looking through success in career, or maybe you've been looking through education, or maybe you've been looking through a marriage, and and you're sure that's going to restore you spiritually, and for once in your life, you're going to be whole. No, you're not. You're not going to be whole until you connect with your heavenly Father, and you allow him a place in your life. That's what makes a difference. That's what the nation of Israel forgot. It's also a statement about the fact that God brings new life to dead situations. I don't know about you, but I've been on retreats as youth, as a young adult. As an adult, I've led retreats. And you get to those mountaintop experiences, you know, you You've spent all weekend learning and growing. And, and, you know, by Sunday morning, worship takes on a whole new meaning. And you feel like, my gosh, if I got any closer to God, I'd be standing in the throne room of God. And then you come back to Monday morning at work. Or the reality of home life. And all the freshness and newness seems to get sucked right back out. And you feel like you're dry again. And you're in this arid desert place. And everything feels dead again. Who brings that life? It's not the retreat location. It's not the retreat leaders. It's not a particular message. It's God. It's God that brings new life. When we let him. New life does not come through career or commitment to another human being. It does not come through the birth of your first child or the last one leaving the nest. It doesn't come through retirement or vacation. It comes when God speaks new life into your dry experience. That comes through us surrendering and allowing him to do that. Which means if you're a control freak like me, you got to give up on making it happen your way, on your timetable. Reminds me of a cartoon where the cartoon character says to God, God, is, is it true that a million dollars to you is like a penny? God says, yeah. He says, God, is, is, it, is it true that a million years to you is like a second? And God says, yeah. And the cartoon character says, God, can I have a penny? And he says, sure, just a second. 2,600 years for this prophecy to come true. And you're mad that God hasn't done what you told him to do last week, last month, last year? 
Really? Let's let God be God. Let's let him decide when, how, where. You know, people keep asking us at the church, you know, um, you know as soon as this pandemic stops, you know, we can, um, we can stop serving dinners on Wednesday night. Why? We're reaching out to a whole new population in our community that are food insecure. Last Wednesday, we served 349 dinners. I want to tell you about one that I think reminds me that God's not done with that ministry yet. We put a sign up front here on Buffalo that says free meal, five to six, and we put one back on Chestnut. And they were preparing the meals, and um, the side door was open between us and St. John's Episcopal, and a little boy, probably not seven, about that tall, came by on his bicycle. He, he had a bike helmet on with a mohawk right down the center of his bicycle helmet. And he had his blue Superman cape on. And he came to the door and he said to Ann, Bacher, our outreach director, he said, is, it, is this where I get a meal? She said, absolutely. How many would you like? He said, J- just one, just for me. And then he spied some drinks on a table that, that Jody Vilmer had put out for those assembling the, the meals. And he said, and, and could I have one of those? Ann said, absolutely. He said, could I have two? She said, sure you can. She said, where do you live? He said, I live over by Sanders. And gave her his name. And then proceeded to put his bag with his meal on it, on his handlebars, and rode his bike home. I don't know where the parents were. But I know that there's a seven-year-old boy that was touched last Wednesday because this church decided to serve meals. And as long as there's another seven-year-old boy, I'm going to keep asking that we serve meals. And if 10 years from now we're still serving meals, I'm fine with that. You know, the program that you loved 20 years ago, that, that for you really kind of helped you along in a journey, may be gone. Something else may be in its place now. We don't know, but we know that God is calling us to surrender to who? To him. Not to Daryl's ideas, not to your ideas, but to him. And allow him to bring new life to dead bones. What's that going to look like? Who knows? I just know that God's not done here yet. There's ministry to do. And I can't wait to get busy doing it. I just pray that God would find me surrendered and waiting Not for the program that I like to come back, but for the program that he needs us to do, to come to place, to transform lives, to touch people. It may mean we have to add a fourth worship service, okay. It may mean we have to do something else completely different that we've never thought of before, all right. If he's going to call us to it, he's going to provide a way. I'm certain of that. What about in your experience? Where is that dryness that he really wants to bring new life to? Can we just admit that that the scripture doesn't say, I have come that they may have life and may have it abundantly until you're 45, then forget it, you're done. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that once you hit 65 or once you retire, all abundant life promises stop. Maybe you're just now at the point where he's ready to to give you some new abundant life because you have time or opportunity to experience it. A valley of dry bones that become a vast army. Where's that dryness in you that God is so ready to transform? Let's pray. Father God, we pray this day that you would step into our experience. And wherever you find dryness, Father, you would bring new life. Even if it's an area of our life, Father, that we thought the door 
had closed, the ship had sailed. There wasn't a snowball's chance in Hades of that ever changing. Help us to stay in a position of surrender, knowing, Lord, that you will do what you do. May we give testimony to all you do and continue to praise you for the way you work in and through us in our lives, in and through this congregation, in this community, in and through the church in this world. May we see you with new, excited eyes, dry bones, coming to life. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen. Stand. Let us stand and let us uh, reflect on what we have heard today. Remembering that God is still in the resurrection business. Amen. God is still in the, in the work of breathing life into dead bones, breathing breath into buried bodies. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke
You may be seated, and let us join together for a prayer of thanksgiving. God, we are thankful today that in you there is life. There's life again. Oh, Lord, uh, thank you for your word today that has spoken to us, uh, broken to our hearts. And, Lord, uh, we want to offer our thanks to you with word, with prayer, with song, and now, Lord, with our gifts of tithes and offerings. Lord, use each gift, I pray. Use each giver as part of your work. Bless, O oh Lord, the gifts that come together. And Lord, above all, receive them as our thanks to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone that has uh, supported the ministry of Christ Church for so long and so well. Those watching from uh, other locations, thank you. There's a slide here that will give you information on how you can give online. And also, um, if you're watching from some other church, we encourage you to support that local church first. Those here, uh, Narthex, uh, you'll find some offering plates on the table as you leave. Thank you. A couple of quick announcements before we close today. First of all, yesterday was Armed Forces Day, so um, to remind you to pray for them this week, if you stop at the um, information desk, there are plastic soldiers. Take one home. Tape it to your mirror. Tape it to your fridge. Stick it on your windowsill. Remember to pray for our active military. This week coming up is National Police Week, another group that could surely use our prayer support, whether they're local, state, national, federal police. Let's keep them in prayer as well. Hey, the grocery bag ladies have got enough grocery bags, so hang on to yours or take them to Walmart, okay? Recycle them there. They'll let you know when they need more. And uh, May 30th is coming up. It's Peace with Justice Sunday. We'll have a special offering that day for that um, endeavor. And the last thing is a date to put on your calendar. For the first time in two years, we have a date on the calendar for in-person Vacation Bible School. So, July 19th to 24th, get it on your calendar. The kids have been waiting for two years to come back and have fun with us. Um, we can't wait to see their faces. We've been seeing them as they come. Some of them come through our, our food line on Wednesdays when we do the meals. Uh, we've been connecting with a bunch of kids, so we're hoping to see those kids as well. July 19th to 23rd. Pre-registration will be required. Those details will be coming up. Volunteer sign-ups will be coming around soon. Be ready to sign up when that comes around, okay? We're going to sing one more song before we let you out of here. Go ahead, Sam. Let's stand as we sing. And these are the days of Elijah.
Go in peace and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.